Good morning, everyone. Mr. Smith here. And today we are finally on our last day of notes. And in today's notes of taxonomy, we are simply going to classify what identifies an organism as alive or not alive. So today's conversation is simply about living and non-living organisms and we're going to condense everything down into the six kingdoms of life but just as a review we have to make sure that we're able to recall what we discussed last week with how we classify living organisms remember aristotle was kind of like the lamarck of evolution where remember lamarck believed that organisms evolved through acquired traits aristotle got his concept wrong as well because he simply organized organisms living organisms into plants and animals but we know that's not the case because we have things like bacteria fungi all those other miscellaneous living organisms that are not simply classified into either plants or animals. Now remember, Carlos Linnaeus, the father of taxonomy, came up with the hierarchical system of how he wanted to classify living organisms into kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And the criteria that we're going to focus on today, specifically at that kingdom organizational level, are three things that identify an organism or three criteria that help identify if an organism is alive. So one, what is their cell type? We need to be able to recall from the cell unit what is the difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryote. Remember, eukaryotes have a nucleus, whereas prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, such as bacteria. Second criteria is the cell number. Are these organisms made out of one cell or are they made out of millions of cells? Uni versus multicellular. And then the third and last criteria is their feeding type. Are they autotrophic or are they heterotrophic? Now, to keep things really, really short today, because I don't want this PowerPoint to be very, very long, because I want you all to come back and chime in in the chat section if you need any assistance with today's assignment. But there are six kingdoms that we can classify living organisms. We have archaea bacteria, we have eubacteria, we have protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. Now, the two prokaryotic kingdoms are archaea bacteria and eubacteria. And I wanna go over this just really, really quick. The main difference between archaea and eubacteria, archaea prefix means ancient. These are considered to be one of the first, if not the first living organisms on earth. They're also known as extremophiles because they like extreme environments. Remember, philic means to like. Archaea bacteria are extremophiles because they like living in extreme environments, such as areas that are too hot for other organisms or too cold. Eubacteria are the bacteria that are common. They're all over the place. They're all over your desk. They're all over whatever you're touching right now. Archaea and eubacteria used to exist in the same kingdom. There used to only be five kingdoms because scientists could not differentiate the differences between the archaea and eubacteria kingdom. But we have since separated the modern kingdom into archaea and eubacteria. Now, here is a brief table of identifying the three criteria that helps distinguish if these organisms are alive cell type cell number and feeding type i'm not going over this with you all in this powerpoint this is your responsibility to study this information on your own and you will be assessed on it so please make sure that you take a look at this table but i want to get to a current event topic and kind of get back to that living versus not living because the only thing that we have done is talk about the living kingdoms of the world but what about the kingdoms of the world that are not alive? And that is bringing us to a topic such as viruses. Now, I understand that viruses are a, a hot topic right now due to the pandemic that's going across the world. One of the most common viruses that you hear about every single year is influenza. Influenza is the abbreviated word for flu. But there are other viruses. We all heard of viruses such as HIV, hepatitis. When you all were in elementary school, there was a recent Ebola outbreak that was very, very deadly. You also have things such as the adenovirus and other viruses that can be classified as bacterial phages. 
And then of course, we have the hot topic today of the coronavirus that has pretty much shut the whole entire world down. And we'll talk about the coronavirus in a moment. But before we get into detail about these viruses and what these viruses are, we have to first define what a virus is. A virus is a small infectious agent that replicates only in the side of living cells of an organism. It can infect all living organisms, including bacteria, different species of bacteria. So viruses do not discriminate against what living organism it wants to infect. It will infect bacteria, it will infect plants, it will infect animals. But the biggest thing here that I want to drive home today is for you all to know and be aware that viruses are not alive. Viruses are not a part of the six kingdoms of life. But the tricky thing is, is that they have DNA. How is an organism that is considered to not be alive to have DNA? The reason that viruses are not declared to be a living organism is based upon three main things. But the one that I wanna highlight here is that viruses require a host to reproduce. Viruses cannot reproduce amongst themselves. A virus cannot reproduce with a virus. Viruses require a host in order to insert their DNA. And once they inject their DNA, the host will be tricked into thinking that it is their DNA. And the host cell will begin to reproduce the viral DNA, which will in turn create more viruses. Now, this is known as the lytic cycle. Once those viruses reproduce, they would release from the host cell, causing the host cell to die, and those viruses would then start to affect neighboring cells. Now, there are different ways that viruses can spread amongst the population. These are known as vectors. These are pathways which viruses can affect people and other living organisms, such as viruses can be airborne. You can get viruses through direct touch. You can get viruses through the improper use of medical equipment or sharing other personal items such as toothbrushes and you use that towel if you drink after someone else that has the virus and their saliva is in there. The mixture of body fluids, bodily fluids can cause viruses to spread amongst the population. But once again, viruses are not new to the world. These images have been documented from about 1918 to about 1920 when the Spanish flu had broken out and affected roughly about 500 million people on earth. And out of those 500 million people, unfortunately 50 million people, 10% of the confirmed cases had passed away. This was one of the most deadliest viruses that has ever impacted the world. As we look at the pictures, we can still see practices that are taking place today between now and the coronavirus, where people are simply trying to cover their faces with the mask. Why? Because the mouth and nose are gateways for airborne pathogens such as viruses to affect hosts. Now we can see that masks now and back then are much different. And we can also see where people were using masks incorrectly, where they were only covering their mouths, but not their noses or vice versa. But viruses have been around for a very, very long time. But there are ways to treat a virus. You cannot treat a virus with an antibiotic. Why? Because antibiotic means, anti means against, biotic means living organism. Antibiotics are great when you want to treat a um, bacterial infection. Why? Because bacteria are alive. They're part of the six kings of life. But viruses are not alive. So you can use vaccines, which are developed to treat viruses. Vir vaccines have completely eradicated many viruses in the world. And that is it, y'all. We have a project that's due on Friday by 11.59 p.m. I'm not going to give you all to Sunday this week because I'm assigning it to you today. Now, we will meet again on Thursday for my A-Day folks and Friday for my B-Day folks if you all have any questions regarding the project. But only thing you need to do is put your name right here and I want you to identify what infection you are looking at, observing. Here are a list of infections you may choose from. The Ebola virus, swine flu, polio, measles, hepatitis A, B, influenza, HPV, Marburg, rabies. Here is an example of how to complete your project. Infection choice here, HIV. This organism is a virus. I define HIV for you. 
How is it contracted? By the exchange of bodily fluids, so on and so forth. This is how simple I want your project to be. Turn it in by Friday. If you would like extra credit, you can convert this information into a PowerPoint, email it to me by Friday, 11.59 p.m., and you will receive extra credit. But that is it. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to ask any questions if needed, and I will see you all on Thursday or Friday. Have a great day, everyone.